Hello and welcome to the Paris Air Show here at Le Bourget. We're on the stand of the European Space Agency where they're showing off some of their finest missions, including the IXV Intermediate Experimental Vehicle and of course the famous Philae, which touched down on a comet last year and has now woken up again, ready for science. We're here to talk to the two men who are at the head of the European Space Agency. And I say two because there are two of them at the moment. Over here, we have Jan Werner, who is the current head of the German Space Agency and takes over at the beginning of July. And we have Jean-Jacques Dordain, who is actually going to retire at the end of this month. Jean-Jacques, when you look at Philae here, how do you feel? I think, Jan, I must say that uh, uh, it's a good time to uh, to live because uh, living with such a success, I think that this is the best. Huh? What's going to happen now with Philae? Where? What are we going to do with it? When I came to uh, DLR some eight years ago, I was presented this uh, marvelous experiment and I said it will not work uh, because I'm a civil engineer. I thought that's not possible. Now what is going on now? We have already three hours a day we have sunshine on the lander, so Philae is active again. He is assembling data of his, uh, all the environment around him. And we will have a, a little bit change of the orbit of Rosetta, so to have a better connection. And I'm sure we will have in the coming weeks, uh, we will have really very nice data from the lander and from Rosetta, so that we know more about comets. And as you know, comets are the oldest parts of our the solar system, so we get more information about what wa was here some billion years ago. Jean-Jacques, looking back at your time in the job, what's your highlight over those years? Certainly for me, as the previous director of Launcher, the fact that we could complete the range of uh, uh, ESA launchers uh, from Ariane to uh, Soyuz and Vega is certainly uh, something important. Landing on Titan and I just arrived at ESA, uh, it was a fantastic event, which makes of ESA entering the Premier League of the space uh, power, the, the fossil light given by Planck, uh, Rosetta and Philae, all that is uh, makes of ESA uh, a very uh, important space agency in the world. You mentioned launchers. That's somewhere there's, there seems to be a lot of movement at the moment. We seem to be moving towards privatization with Ariane Bass. What's the idea behind that? Is privatization the right way forward? We are in a, a shift of paradigm towards clear understanding of and uh, sharing of uh, risks and responsibilities. Uh, so in the past, uh, the public sector gave the money and the private sector did not take the responsibility. So in order to, to change that, we are now looking to a different scheme and I'm quite sure that we will succeed. Jean-Jacques, let's talk about international partners. The European Space Agency has had a very good working relationship with the Russian Space Agency, Roscosmos. They've had a few failed launches, they've had some problems, there are question marks over their ability to be good partners. Do you think we should carry on working with the Russians? I am convinced that we have to continue to, uh, to work with the Russians for uh, First of all, because today we need the Russians. We could not, we could, not, we could, we cannot launch Galileo without uh, without Soyuz. We cannot la not launch ExoMars without uh, without the Russians. So uh, we need the Russians. International cooperation is an important factor of space activities, and we, we should not export our problems of planet Earth into space. On the contrary, we should import uh, what uh, cooperation in space uh, brings. To, uh, to planet Earth. ESA and, uh, has good relations to many, many countries in the world, and therefore ESA can be something like a broker and is already something like a broker, uh, even in difficult times on Earth. You mentioned actually earlier the Galileo project. At the moment, I don't seem to have a Galileo signal in my car, I seem to have a GPS signal. When is it that I go to the hire car company and they say, do you want to have a Galileo in your car? We, are, we have a Galileo signal. I think that, uh, and maybe you don't even notice that because the, the terminal on ground are compatible with uh, uh, GPS and uh, Galileo. But we have already eight satellites in orbit. Uh, so the Galileo navigation system is going to be in place soon, working just as GPS is? The, the, the first services will be operational next year, 2016 and the full services uh, will be operational in 2019, 2020 at the latest. Next year, 
you're going to go to Mars, begin that search for life. In 2018, a big rover is going to go there and start looking for life. Do you think they'll find it? You see, uh, the, 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 I turn the question of do you think that this big universe has only life on Earth? I mean, we have so many solar systems, so many planets, so many suns. I'm quite sure that we are not the only one. I don't expect green people over there or something like that. Uh, but the, it's really interesting whether you find something showing that there was something like life in a very basic function. A lot of people are quite interested in sending humans to Mars. Do you think that's a good idea? I am sure that humans will go to Mars. That it, uh, I don't know the calendar, but that uh, I am sure that uh, humans will go to Mars. At the moment, the presence that we have for humans in space is the International Space Station. That likely has to be replaced within the next 10 years or so. What are we going to do? So we have to develop some ideas together with our partners in the US and also in Russia, maybe even uh, with China and India, uh, to uh, look to the advantages of the ISS, which we had in the past, also to look what were the deficits at ISS and then to develop a new plan for the future. One of my ideas is to go to moon, to the far side of the moon, uh, to have there really robots and humans be present uh, on a permanent station, not bring all the stuff to the moon, but using also the material of the moon, for instance, to build a large telescope and so on. The most important heritage of the International Space Station is the partnership. The partnership will stay much longer than the hardware. The hardware will, will finish at one point in time, but the partnership will stay. Jan, when you get into the job on the 1st of July, what's the first thing you're going to be doing? The first thing will be I will talk to the people, to the staff of ESA, because I know only a few of them and they should know about me and I would like to know about them. I would like to know what, they are really, what their main interest in day-to-day -day work is and where their visions are. So communication will be the first things. Jean-Jacques, we're currently in the situation where on the 1st of September we have one spare seat going to the International Space Station. Are you going to fill it? If you give me 40 million dollars, I am ready. That uh, this is the cost. Uh, but if I can go for free, yes, I am ready. And uh, because you know that uh, my dream has always been to, uh, to, uh, to be an astronaut. I have been selected uh, to be an astronaut. Since I could not, the backup was to become director general. <laughs> but um, I am ready to be the first director general to become an astronaut. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us on Euronews. If you want to find out more about what's been going on here at the Paris Air Show, have a look at Euronews.com.